Okay, so if you've ever heard of a toroidal flow, it's basically a flow of energy that runs like this and goes out and comes in and goes out. And I'll show you a picture of that um, later on. I'll, I'll post it on my non-vibes page or whatever so you can actually see this. But basically, we know that this exists. What we don't know is how to use it. And interesting enough, we've known about sacred geometry for a while because if you look at a hurricane, you can actually find the golden ratio, which is 1 plus 1 is 2 and 2 plus 3 uh, and 1 plus 2 is 3 and 2 plus 3 is 5. And if you keep adding the one before it to the one that's ahead of it, you end up with the golden ratio. And it's it's just perfection. It's more uh, appealing to the eye. Anybody who's ever done a logo, you ever look at Twitter, Facebook, um, Apple, these were all done using the golden ratio. And the reason is because it is more appealing to your eye. It is just instantly perfection to your eye. And so everything has been designed. Michelangelo used it. Uh, the Mona Lisa, like all of these things were done with the golden ratio. But you can find the golden ratio in nature. You can find it in a pine cone. You can find it in a shell, a nautical shell. Um, you can find it in hurricanes. You can find it in tornadoes. You can find it in your DNA. The golden ratio is actually all over the place. And interesting enough, if you've studied the Freemasons, they knew this because they created a tool that allowed you to actually measure the golden ratio in everything. We'll get to that later. It's pretty cool. But anyways, my point is, um, the golden ratio is found in all of these different things. But we didn't really know what it was, except for the fact that it was appealing to the eye and that you could find it in nature. Until we started putting the two together. When we started putting the spiritual message of when you go within, or if you don't go within, you go without, and taking science, now suddenly you see something very different. So I'm going to show you exactly how you use the spark of creation, the God of creation, the one thing inside yourself. Because see, in this world, they teach you that the only thing that can generate energy is a battery. That's what they teach you. The only thing that can generate energy is a battery. Because even if you have water moving at a certain speed, you still run into hydrogen locked in there, and that can be explosive. They teach you that a battery is the thing that runs everything. It's what runs your laptops. It's what runs your computers. It's what runs everything. Electricity is connected to a battery, which is running. But here's the cool thing. You are the battery. You are the battery. And I think that Tesla actually figured this out. Um, I have no idea if this is obviously why he was killed, but I think that he actually figured it out. So I'm going to show you how. And you can tell me whether you believe it or not. Okay? When you show compassion to somebody, you create a frequency inside of your heart. Okay? An actual frequency, not a bullshit or anything like that. An actual frequency inside of your heart. And when that frequency matches the person, that you're actually showing compassion to. Now understand, this is still artificial, okay? Compassion is not love. Do, com do not confuse the two. You can be compassionate over something and not love it. But this is the start of it. When you show compassion inside of your heart, you change it to a frequency. When that frequency meets, meets the other person's frequency inside of the heart, you create what is called an outside tutorial flow, okay? And what that means is it starts in your heart, and it goes and it pulls everything inside of it, okay? It's basically like a, um, a compressor, basically. It is pulling inside. So now it is coming to you. That means that something external is now coming inside of you. And because of the fact that it's coming inside of you, kind of like like energy attracts like energy, okay? You decide to be compassion, compassionate. It matched up with the other person's heart frequency, and now you've created a pull into you and now that you've created a pull into you as that energy runs through it is going to run back through this area right here and this area right here your solar plexus interesting enough is actually where gravity is created and i'm going to explain how that works and einstein actually was the one who figured this out so as the energy is flowing through you because you've decided to show compassion which means that your heart is now on the same frequency as someone else's which creates a pull into you okay that energy is going to come back through again. And now here's the second part. And this is the part where science and spirituality come hand in hand together because there's two parts. The next part is you have to feel it in your heart. And the only way to do that, and the only way that you can kind of think of that is after your mind has decided to be compassionate and it starts coming through, your heart has to decide to be compassionate. 
Okay. So you have to teach your heart how to be compassionate. And so just like you teach a child something for the very first time, like for instance, how to eat, you do it one at a time. Okay. You don't just go out there and love everything because that's, that's not what we're looking for. You do it one at a time. And as that energy goes through and then it feels it in your heart, it creates the point of singularity. It creates a spark. And not only just any spark, it creates a 0.6195 ratio spark. In other words, the thing that you see in nature, in shells, the thing that you see in trees, the thing that you see in your body that Fibonacci understood, that uh, Michelangelo understood, the God particle, the thing that actually creates outside of a battery is actually inside of you. And that's that spark. And not only is this kind of like, you know, it, this is not just something that is out there. EKGs actually read these sparks. Okay. So it is something that you can actually measure. And so when that spark goes off, it creates basically the ability to create a self-sustaining toroidal flow. Okay. So in other words, as the energy is going through, as it comes out, you create a compression that pulls everything in. And as it pulls everything in, it moves through your body. And when it hits your heart, if your heart learned that exact same compassion, and there's a way to do this, and I'm going to talk about how to do that. But as your heart learns that exact same compassion, it sends a spark. It sends a creation. It sends a everything that you could possibly be looking for when you're looking at electricity and the internet and everything like that. It creates that inside of you. And that energy now runs everything right back through. Now you are self-sustaining all the energy that you need to continue to live. All the energy that you need to continue to work in this world. And most importantly, all the energy you need to create. Okay. Now, how do you do this? You do this. It's very simple. You do this. You teach your heart how to have compassion by taking someone that is outside and bringing them in. And everyone has done this because if you've got family, if you've got friends, if you've got those people that you're like, I would ride or die for that person, then you are taking them from the outside and bringing them within yourself. Anybody who's been in a relationship that is like absolutely awesome and everything is going great, you're taking something that is outside and you're bringing it within yourself. And notice people that are just getting relationships that give all, that, that are compassionate, that are caring, that hold the door, that do all these different things, your relationship is awesome. Your life is awesome. It's why it's called a puppy dog phase. It's why it's called a love phase is because literally you're not even living in reality. You've changed everything. Okay. So what if you could do that all the time? It's because that's what I think Jesus figured out. So what you do is you take somebody outside yourself, somebody you don't understand, somebody you, you judge and you, you've basically cut them off and said, no, there's no way. There's no possible way. And not only do you try first to show compassion, you try to meet their frequency. You, you adjust your heart to meeting their frequency, which creates the start of the toroidal flow. But then once that energy starts coming through, then you feel it. Then you make the active choice. You choose to say, okay, this person is now inside. This person is now somebody I care about. This person is somebody I will heal. This is somebody I will help. You know what I'm saying? And I think that that's what Jesus did. He went from town to town to town to town. And here's the other thing. I think the reason that he went from town to town to town to town is because of the fact that just like harmonics in music, you have to keep moving. See, if you stop, the energy can only self-sustain itself for so long. But if you continue upping your game, meeting someone new that you didn't know, look at Jesus. He went from healing people that had leprosy that were probably the grossest people that we could even possibly imagine. And he upped his game every single time. He went to people that, you know, like for instance, the woman who was accused of adultery, caught in the act, okay, hand in the jar kind of thing. She was caught in the act. And what did he do? He used a way to show compassion to her that sent a ripple effect that made everybody else just drop their stones and walk away by saying one thing. He is without sin cast for a stone. Okay, so what I am saying is that if you take spirituality and you take science and you put them together to create this infinity sign, you suddenly have the answer that you were looking for. It's not outside of you. And any time that you focus on religion or any time that you focus on science, any time that you focus on those stones or 
or those cards or anything like that, you're only doing 50%. And don't get me wrong, 50% is better than nothing. I will never tell you that stop doing what you're doing. What I'm trying to tell you is that there are two parts to this whole entire thing. And when you put them together, everything makes sense. Everything makes sense. Because other than that, you're, you're stuck with like your hand tied behind your back. You have all of the information you need in spirituality to look up and say, thank you, God, and show the appreciation and everything. But then what ends up happening? You're still a, uh, a victim of this world. You're still walking through it. And when things end up happening, you fall back. And depending on how high. You know, you can only handle to certain points. And so when something really intensely hap intense happens, you usually fall back down to the bottom and are like, oh, God, why? Why did this happen? You know, because you did it externally. It was always inside of you. And I don't think the message was the kingdom of God is inside you as in just mental. The kingdom of God is actually inside of you. The spark of creation is actually inside of you and the coolest part about this is that it puts all religion together whether you're talking about the jewish and the kabbalah where they talked about how god was like in soft and the spark is inside of you whether you're talking about jesus who said the kingdom of god is inside of you and he talked about you know everything i can do you can do and more when you talk about buddha who understood this on a massive scale you know and and spread it out basically like wildfire you know to to followers who are no longer complaining about things even in the worst of situations they were being appreciative but but we're st we were still missing certain parts and so interesting enough i think the bible in a way isn't it wasn't meant to be something that was taken literal in any way shape or form i don't think any of it was i think it was actually meant to be taken as like a spell book like like a like a um and by spell book i don't mean you know i, I mean it was it's like a manual to us how to make us work, how to make the body work. And wouldn't that make sense? Because all of these books are supposed to be inspired by God, inspired by the creator. Why wouldn't they be books that then are manuals on how you actually work? You know, you go out and you buy an Android phone, you get an Android manual, how it works, exactly how it works. And so my point, and to wrap this up at 12 minutes, which if you stuck with me, is totally awesome, um, is that you are the battery. And everything that Tesla said, everything that Einstein said, everything that Buddha said, everything that Jesus said, everything that any master that has walked or any person that has understood this was trying to say to you is that it's about you. It has always been about you because if you don't change your frequency, you don't meet someone else's at theirs. And if you don't meet someone else's at theirs, you don't create the flow that goes within you. And if you don't create the flow that goes within you, then you don't actually continue the flow going. And here's the kicker, and here's how it comes all together. Inside of your body is DNA, and DNA has been proven to be aligned with the golden ratio. The flow of DNA, just like this, is the golden ratio. So when that spark goes through your body and it ignites, it also ignites your DNA. Okay, and why is that important? That is important because science is already starting to prove that your DNA is literally how you perceive the world. So in other words, your DNA changes based off of your world. Okay, we, we're, we're done with genetics. You're not going to be an alcoholic because your dad was an alcoholic. You're going to be an alcoholic because you choose to be an alcoholic. Okay, and so what we have learned is that the things that happen in your world send off a signal. That signal travels to your actual DNA, and that changes your DNA. And so if you want to believe that you can walk on water, all you have to do is use that spark when it goes off and believe in that. Because even Oprah, everyone else has already proven through all their shows, Morgan Freeman, Oprah, um, I want to say Denzel Washington, Jim Carrey have already proven without a doubt that belief is everything. If you believe in something, that is all you need in this world. And so what I'm trying to tell you is that now by using compassion and matching up and then teaching your heart that same compassion, and you can't, you can't cheat this game. You can't trick it. You can't do anything except for do it, okay? You can't half do it. You can't half want to do it. You either do it or you don't. And as that energy travels through you, it sparks your DNA, which creates the start of the movement of your DNA. And anybody that knows 
uh, quantum physics knows that when you teach waves how to respond as a um, uh, what am I trying to think of when you che teach waves how to respond as a flow basically a uh, recursive flow so like this like a tornado think of a tornado okay when you teach waves to respond like that the point at the very very bottom is the point of gravity it's the point of singularity and so it's also the spark that then sends it right back through and continues going okay so when you do this you create a spark that sends your dna into motion and your dna in motion is then the thing that ends up controlling everything okay and if you don't believe that now go back and look at a hurricane now go back and look at a tornado now look back and look at that pine cone see we thought that the golden ratio was just found in these things no these things happened because of the golden ratio a tornado is as powerful as it is because of the flow that it's in a hurricane is as powerful as it is because of the flow that it's in and creation broke through the ground broke through the mud broke through the concrete because of the flow that it's in the shape is everything it was the answer all along and it was always right there the point that you hit at the very very bottom is the point of gravity and einstein said it best when you continue that flow you create a tornado inside of a tornado and it keeps going and that's what gravity is that's what is pulling down okay it is awesome and i am going to continue doing videos and i am going to continue talking about this because here's the whole entire thing you don't have to go out there and give money to the homeless you just have to change your heart pick someone every single day that you don't understand that you don't that you didn't want to understand and and get to know them ask them questions ask them the why's do whatever it is that you can to change the frequency in your heart because when you match theirs, you start that flow. And if you can start that flow, you can teach your heart compassion. And you teach your heart compassion by then saying, okay, now that I understand you, I love you. I care about you. I'm here for you. And when you do that, you will create the flow that will hit the singularity spark. And that spark will ignite your DNA. And your DNA will light up. And when your DNA lights up, it will start the flow of the golden ratio. And the golden ratio is a spiral that moves down to a singularity point. And when you hit that singularity point, you create gravity, which is an attraction. And when you have that type of attraction or that pull, you now have all the miracles that you could ever want inside your hand. I don't think that Jesus walked on water because he was divine. I don't think that Jesus healed the sick because he was divine. He did the work. He went from town to town to town, meeting strangers and new people he didn't know and saying, I care about you. How can I help you? And I think that was the whole entire message. And the funniest thing is, if we understood it, we wouldn't need technology. If we understood it, we wouldn't need healthcare. And most importantly, if we really understood it, we wouldn't need money. And that is where the message gets cut off. Hope you enjoyed the message. Uh, I'm going to post this on my nine vibes just because I, I want to get a reaction of what people think. But um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Keep your nine vibes alive. Keep that spark alive and show compassion in the world.